Dear friends of the Tom Photo channel, good to see you here again, and a warm welcome to all new viewers. Today's topic is Nikon's 50mm prime lens, AFS Nikkar 50mm 1.8G. It's a prime lens with a focal length perfect for portrait photography. It's made for full frame Nikon cameras. You can use full frame lenses with cropped sensor cameras, but not the other way around. Most digital SLRs are cropped sensor cameras, meaning that their sensor is smaller than the area of film used for a single picture in the old-fashioned film camera. These are called full-frame cameras in our modern digital era. Of course, when you put this lens in front of a crop sensor camera, you are dealing with a crop factor about 1.5. This means your image will appear magnified as if you used a zoom. Therefore, in front of my trusty Nikon D3400, this lens behaves like a 75mm full-frame equivalent, making it even better for portraits. I purchased this lens for dual purpose. I use it with my crop sensor Nikon, but also I use it in front of my Fuji cameras. Soon I'll post a video on what this lens can do with Fujis and how to best use it with Fuji, so please stay tuned. I chose between two Nikkar 50mm primes. The other one was AFS Nikkar 50mm 1.4G, a very similar lens that goes down to f-stop 1.4 instead of 1.8. I did my research and it seemed that the 1.8 lens, my lens, is sharper at f-stop under 5.6 and the 1.4 lens is sharper at f-stop above 5.6. Since I want to use my lens at primarily f-stop 2.8, this is the magical f-stop for cinematic filming, I opted for the 1.4 lens. Please note that my comparison of these two lenses originates from my literature research. I've not tested this myself. The lens itself feels nice. It's short and stout compared to the Nikon 3400 kit zoom lens, just under 5.5 centimeters long when attached to the camera. Filter size is 58 millimeters. Lens comes with a hood. It has a focus ring that also shows approximate distance to the point in focus behind the small window. The outside of the lens is all plastic and turning the ring makes the sound you get when you turn plastic rings. It's not a problem for me. But some people may want a more pro feel instead, as you get in more expensive lenses. The lens is light, it weighs 185 grams, but feels even lighter to me when picked up. There's a switch to change between manual focus and automatic focus. The lens mount is made of metal. Autofocusing is quick and quiet thanks to the silent wave motor. Let's listen to the sound too. It's an aspherical lens and the lens aberrations are well under control. The glass elements are covered with super integrated coating, as Nikon fancily puts it. The images I'm showing in this video have all been taken with a 50mm 1.8 lens attached to Nikon D3400. I appreciate the bokeh I'm getting with this lens. I find it usable for medium range close-ups as well. The minimal focusing distance is 45 centimeters. This is not optimal for macro work, but as you see, it does work with flowers too. For flowers, a specialized macro lens is of course better and I'll talk about my 90 millimeter Tamron macro lens in another video already lined up for production. I have to say that the images I get with the Nikkar 50 millimeter lens have been very high quality indeed. The sharpness of this lens is certainly something to praise. The bokeh is pleasant. Sure, the lens doesn't have image stabilization, but users don't want to see this with a prime lens anyway. Note that image stabilization only helps against camera shake when hand-holding your camera. It's useless when your subject moves and even counterproductive when using a tripod. The large maximal aperture, f-stop 1.8, takes care of the low light issues beautifully. And as with most lenses, you get the best results when you stop down the lens for about one stop. This lens is no exception. 
I measure the lens sharpness and sweet spot for all of my lenses. Down below is a link that tells you how I do it. I generally photograph paintings for this because they're flat and I love paintings. These are the results. The lens sweet spot is difficult to call exactly. The sharpness goes up with increasing the f-stop until all the way to 13. I've not seen very many lenses behave like this. Typically the sweet spot occurs much sooner. Perhaps the most similar lens I've seen has been the Nikon's 18 to 55 mm kit lens. See the link to that video below. But although the image sharpness seems to be the highest at f-stop 13, I'm hesitating to assign 13 as the sweet spot because the diffraction problems are sure to play a role at that value. Instead, I'd like to say that f-stop 8 is more likely to yield a higher quality result. Note that lens sweet spot does not tell you what aperture gives you the sharpest overall picture because aperture influences the depth of field much more than the sharpness of a single point. Sweet spot shows you what f-stop can produce the sharpest point in the photograph when that point is in perfect focus. To summarize, I do not at all regret obtaining the Nikkar 50mm f1.8 uh, G lens. Especially the value for money is really good. With this, I'd like to express my gratitude to you for continuing to watch my photography related videos. I always enjoy spending quality time with you. Happy photography, and till the next time, have a nice day.